Hello guys and welcome to Watch Talk Wednesday. My name is Josh and I am your host. Today we actually have five stories I can count. I did pass kindergarten. Uh, and let us hop right on into the news. So we actually have a really, really cool story uh, from a blog to watch. If we look on my screen right now, we have the Tag Heuer Watch Going to Mars with China's official Mars exploration program. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this. Uh, obviously, you know, Omega is famous for their space uh, exploration, you know, being the, the first watch worn on the moon, um, but Tag Heuer was actually the first watch manufacturer, the, fr the first Swiss watch brand to get a watch into outer space, and they are continuing the space legacy uh, with partnering with China. So we're not actually sure uh, what role the watch is actually going to have in the, the mission. Uh, obviously, uh, China is nowhere close to putting a human on Mars yet, uh, but they are going to be sending a rover, and in this, uh, in this article they talk about uh, TAG's involvement in that. It looks like uh, the, the most likely scenario is that a TAG watch will just be in the actual Mars lander. So uh, again, hopefully that does actually make it to the surface of Mars, but even if it does, um, the watch isn't necessarily going to be um, mission critical, which is kind of a letdown. In their marketing uh, pictures you can see on my screen, uh, it has the Hoyer 01, which is actually a pretty cool looking watch, I think. Um, but again, they haven't actually released what watch uh, they're going to put in this rover. So it's a pretty interesting article from a blog to watch, and it kind of goes over TAG's history in space. And I would definitely encourage you to go check it out if you want to find out more. Uh, about other watch manufacturers other than Omega who have had watches in space. All right, so moving on to the second story that we have today. This is actually coming from Reddit. Uh, it's a very useful uh, picture that was submitted about how to spot a fake Rolex. There actually isn't much to this story other than the picture. Uh, again, with all of these videos, there are links to the articles down below, and of course there will be a link to this picture in the description down below. Uh, but the first step to spotting a fake Rolex is inspecting the watch with your eyes closed, making sure there are no rough edges. Uh, the second step is to make sure that you actually can't hear the watch ticking uh, like you would normally with a quartz piece. Uh, uh, step three is to make sure that the date on the um, watch actually jumps out. The magnification on a Rolex watch, the, the little uh, date bubble, magnifies the date by two and a half times, so the date will actually stand out if you look at the watch head on. Uh, a lot of fake watches only have a 1.5 times magnification, so it doesn't stand out as much. Uh, step four, Rolexes are very heavy. They're made with uh, all stainless steel and their movements are, are pretty heavy as well. So, you know, if, if you feel a watch and it doesn't feel heavy, um, you, that's another indication that it could be fake. Uh, you know, step five here, uh, Rolexes use sapphire crystal. I've, uh, I've actually dropped a watch with sapphire crystal face down from about six feet into sharp rocks and it did not scratch the crystal. So if you see a Rolex with a scratch on the glass, uh, be very, very careful because most likely that glass is not sapphire glass. Um, and then step six is, it's kind of common sense. Um, whenever you're buying a used watch, you're not buying the watch, you're buying the seller. So um, always make sure if you're buying a used piece, uh, especially a used piece that costs anywhere in, in the range of of $10,000 and above, uh, make sure that you're dealing with a reputable dealer. Uh, you can you know, check them out online for sure, but also if anything seems fishy or if the deal seems too, be, too good to be true, 
uh, do not proceed with the deal, even if you feel like you may be missing out. So our third story of the day comes from Worn and Wound, and if you're not familiar, uh, the company AV8, uh, that's AVI-8, has partnered with Worn and Wound in the past, and they actually created a limited edition watch um, that was limited to 150 pieces. And the article from Worn and Wound today announced that Worn and Wound and AV8 are going to be collaborating on a new piece that is actually uh, limited to 300 pieces. Personally, the watch is not in my taste, uh, but some of you guys might find it interesting. And I thought it was actually really interesting that a watch blog was um, actually working with a independent uh, uh, watch brand to create their own watch. It, it seemed a little odd to me. Um, anyway, we're, we're gonna move on and try and find some pictures for you guys. So if you look on my screen, geez. If you look on my screen right here, you can see a picture of this watch, I think on a boot, very comically on a boot. Um, <laughs> it, this is not really my style. Uh, they, they did a few interesting stylistic uh, things with this watch, but it's not it's not really my thing. Uh, you can see here we have kind of the the classic uh, uh, triangle with the two pips right next to it. That's on a whole bunch of aviation pieces, uh, and then we have the numerals at the three and nine. Uh, the six uh, is a little bit the, the the all the styling at the six position is a little bit off. Um, you might like it, I don't really like it. Uh, we have the triangle that is at the 12 o'clock position mirrored at the six o'clock position. And also at the six o'clock position, we have the second subdial. I actually really like the way that this second subdial was done, um, but I am not a huge fan of the design overall. We have the minute hand that actually is broken up partway through, it, it's actually divided in half. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why they did that. I would have preferred just a, a regular uh, sword styled hand with loom all the way through. Uh, and then also we can see the branding, the AV8 and the worn and wound logo with a little crosshair. Um, yeah, we, I don't know, let's look at some more pictures of this thing. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's too bad. Uh, it, it's $399 and it comes with two NATO straps and one leather strap. I don't really think it, it's that bad of a value, especially, you know, if you compare it to um, watches, other watches offered by manufacturers. But if you compare it to watches that you get off of either the gray market or used, um, I'm not entirely sure why you would buy this piece unless you really liked the design because the design is something that I personally have never seen before. We have the crown at the four o'clock position and let's see if we can get a picture of the crown here. Here's a picture of the crown. Yeah, interesting. Uh, it has stainless steel and a PVD coated case. The PVD coating is actually kind of nice for this price point, but personally I don't really like the silver of the stainless steel with uh, the PVD, the black PVD. I just, I think it clashes too much. Not personally my style. Uh, here is a, a picture of the movement. This is using a Miyota, Miyota movement, Miata, Miyota, yikes. Uh, <laughs> which is, of course, a Japanese movement, which is why the price is pretty low. We have the worn and wound branding on the back uh, exhibition case back and uh, a fairly nicely decorated movement. But I don't really know what else to say about this watch. It comes with three different straps and uh, yeah, I, I mean, worn and wound is, you know, trying to make money however they can. And if you like the piece, you should go out and buy it. Uh, it's not really a, a choice that I would choose, uh, but you can do that. Speaking of Worn and Wound, our fourth article also comes from Worn and Wound. It is a comparison of three very similar 
pilot's watches, and this is an article that grabbed my attention because if you're a longtime fan of this channel, you would know that I am currently looking for a pilot style watch to add to my collection. I've had numerous uh, dress watches. I think I'm, I'm dress watched out at this point in time. So I'm looking for more sporty pieces, but they do a very interesting comparison of three different watches that are all very different in their styling. Uh, and let's, let's look at the article here. We have the side-by-side -side Sin 556i, the Oris Pro Pilot Date. Yeah, I like that watch. And the Fortis Cockpit 2. Um, yeah, so basically what they say in the article is the Sin 556i is really, really um, understated, a very classic design, but you know, it's a tool watch. Um, if you want kind of more of a modern and um, fashionable piece, you can go with my favorite, the Oris Pro Pilot Date. Um, and then of course, if you want something very, very interesting, <laughs> you can go with the Fortis Cockpit 2. All of these have very, very similar movements. The SIN 556i has the ETA 2824-2, uh, more of a, a top tier movement that's pretty well decorated. Uh, obviously, the ETA 2824-2 movement is uh, very well respected in the community, and Oris is using the Salita SW220, uh, I believe. Uh, again, similar specs to the ETA 2824, uh, but you know some people don't really like the Salita movements. And then the Fortis has the 2836 from ETA, which is the same as the 2824. It just has the day complication as well. Uh, you know, I, the day is useful sometimes if you forget what day it is. Um, but yeah, so let's let's look a little bit at these watches. Here are all three of them. Very, very different styling cues. As you can see, the SIN 556i is very uh, understated. It, it looks uh, more like a, a tool that you would see on your workbench than necessarily a fashion piece. The Oris also has a lot of uh, themes from aviation but it does look a little bit more stylish, and personally, this is my favorite of all three. And then, of course, you have the Fortis, uh, which I would classify as extremely legible. It has the outer ring going from zero to 60 in five minute incre increments, um, and that really aids in telling what time it is. And then on the inner ring, you have the our indices with the 12, 6, and 9 marked at the 3 o'clock position along that inner ring. You have the day and then the classic uh, aviation style date complication. Personally, I'm not a fan of that, uh, that date complication, that type of date complication. Um, but again, if you know, it's all up to personal preference. I think any of these watches would be a good addition to the collection. And of course, it all just depends on your um, opinion on Salita movements. Personally, I think they're fine, and uh, I think the Oris looks the best. But uh, again, you can pick any of these pieces, they would be wonderful. And they're all around the same price point. They're all uh, 1,000 to 1,500, although, you know, Look at, look at gray market dealers and look for them used. Obviously, I don't even know why I keep saying that. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting comparison and you should check out the article on Worn and Wound. Links will be in the description down below if you want to read a more in-depth comparison. All right, so the last article that we are going to cover today is actually uh, from a blog to watch and it is covering Seven Friday, which uh, I like to call my frenemies. I think they have really, really interesting designs, uh, but personally I'm not a fan of the, um, the build quality, and that seems to be an underlying issue that the community has with Seven Friday. The quality just isn't there considering how much they're charging. 
Uh, but they are coming out with some new special edition watches. These are the uh, P3C-01 hot rod watches. Uh, basically, the really, really interesting or um, new thing about this watch, which actually isn't all that new, is the styling of the watch. Uh, you can see here we have the uh, minute hand on the, the closest uh, uh, rotor here, and this rotor is actually looking a lot like the uh, spokes on a wheel. And then obviously this, this second hand, this metal here, uh, I, I think it's metal, although I could be wrong. Again, looks like a wheel. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting watch. Here are some, some more pictures of it. Uh, this also reminds me to talk about the outside of the watch. It is encased entirely in rubber which, you know, is supposed to mimic the rubber on, on the tires of a racing car. Um, although, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, personally. Yeah, here's the back. No exhibition case back. It just has a little plaque that shows uh, some of the details about the watch. But if we go back here, uh, the first thing that I noticed when looking at this picture is that the minute hand actually looks like the rotor that it's on is plastic. And that is not something that I am particularly a fan of. Uh, we all know that 7 Friday has had some issues with uh, quality in the past, and a lot of what I've read online about 7 Friday is, uh, has said that the quality just isn't there given uh, the price. So. You know, these watches are pretty expensive. They're about, they retail for about $1,000. And uh, this particular special edition, 7 Friday, retails for 1300 And uh, if, if that's a plastic rotor on a $1,300 watch, I definitely think that your money could be spent uh, somewhere else with a different brand that could offer you more quality for the price. Uh, but again, these are very, very iconic watches with a very specific design and no one else makes them uh, like this. So if you like the design and you want to pick up one of these watches, uh, you, you should definitely do so. All right guys, thank you for watching. My name is Josh. Those are the news stories for the watch industry this week. I will see you all next week don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more watch videos like this, and I will see you all later.